from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of IBM Think 2021. Brought to you by IBM. Hello and welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of IBM Think 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. I'm excited to have this next guest, CUBE alumni, Casey Choi, corporate EVP or executive vice president and general manager at Samsung Mobile, the B2B and B2G team. Casey, great to see you. How you been? John, it is wonderful to see you and it's been way too long. Great to be back on the Cube with you. Uh, looking forward to our conversation and I hope you're safe. Yeah, and same to you and great to see you. I'm so excited. One of the things I've really admired about you in our conversations in the past is you've always had your finger on the pulse of the waves and you've always been involved with some really great engineering work. And I want to dig into this now because um, your role uh, is really hitting what are the industry 4.0 kind of wave, which is the confluence of tech, media, entertainment, <laughs> every vertical, big data, IOT, yeah. and the, the, with the distributed computing now called the cloud and edge, it really sets the table for what is now going to be the preferred architecture probably for the next 20 plus years. So give us your view on how you see the, the changing landscape in the industry. Yeah, I, I think I think you you covered you know all of the major seismic shifts that are happening here, and then uh, you know as as we've all experienced over the last you know over a year uh, with the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, that's actually accelerated a lot of the thinking around uh, edge. Uh, we've certainly seen use cases proliferate, whether it be in things such as healthcare. Uh, manufacturing's also taken, I think, a, a real hard look at the applicability of these types of solutions. Uh, we've seen things like, for example, 5G uh, pick up in these sort of industrial applications as, uh, you know, as the industrial companies have thought about, you know, worker safety, as they've thought about automation, as they've thought about, you know, utilizing more uh, protocols, as well as, you know, bringing these technologies and processes together in a way that will help to kind of reinvent uh, their, their particular economic base, as well as kind of the, the learnings that we've seen over the last year coming from these new uh, uh, safety protocols, as well as uh, the need for uh, now, with the economies picking back up, the, the need for you know, productivity, as well as you know, greater efficiencies coming from uh, these types of solutions. So uh, we've seen that confluence happen. And then certainly on our end, as our uh, network connectivity has become much stronger, lower latency, uh, as well as the endpoint capabilities have increased dramatically over the last few years, uh, as SOCs and others have taken root, uh, we've seen uh, the edge, if you will, start to be more uh, extreme in the sense that it's pushing further and further out uh, beyond what we originally envisioned the edge to be. Yeah, and the SOC trend actually highlights that it's not so much about Moore's law as it is more about more chips, yeah. more, more performance. If you look at actual performance, uh, Dave Vellante just put out a report on this where there's much more performance now than ever before coming in from the com combined energy. So, uh, and combined processing power out there. So yeah. it's super, uh, super amazing what you can do uh, at the edge. Uh, before we get into the edge, I want to just clarify, what is your new role there? I mean, Samsung's known for obviously the B2C with the phones and everything else, but you have a specific focus. Uh, what is your main focus there? Yeah, our mission's uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, as, as everyone knows, you know, Samsung is this, uh, you know, powerhouse uh, consumer electronics company. Uh, we, we pride ourselves in, in obviously uh, our, our position in that, but um, we also have a very significant role really in the business to business and in the government and financial services sector uh, space uh, with our mobile devices, as well as with our NOC security platform solution and device management platform. Um, we actually provide a, a large portion of uh, the secure devices for governments worldwide as well as uh, the Knox platform uh, that is built into the majority of our uh, both consumer as well as business devices uh, really allows for uh, that, uh, uh, if you will, that next protective layer on top of the Android OS uh, that allows for things such as personal and professional profiles. So we produce those solutions out of my team um, as well as uh, we provide really the, uh, the, uh, the go-to-market support as well as the R&D support for that platform, including uh, an area that's growing rapidly for us, which is in the uh, rugged category, uh, which is you know one of the key uh, products that we're using for some of these edge applications that uh, that we'll be talking about. 
Great, let's jump into that. What are you guys doing specifically in the edge computing space? Let's dig into it. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe the place to start on that is uh, we're, we're really kind of re-envisioning what the edge is. And uh, I mentioned a, a little earlier that uh, with what's occurring uh, in the, uh, the performance profile and really the functional profile of what is being produced uh, at the device level, you know, we're talking about in the last few years, the fidelity and the capabilities are, you know, in, you know, what I would call the, uh, the, the computer class type uh, uh, functions, as well as obviously mobile devices have always been um, communication gateways for a, a number of fu functions, whether they be, you know, videos or photos, they're multi-sensory in nature. And uh, as this has become more um, practical, and the connected tissue has gotten there with uh, 5G as well as all kinds of other, you know, fast, low latency communications capabilities, you know, Wi-Fi 6, UWB, you know, included within that. What we're finding is that the use case to bring applications, especially cloud native and container native applications uh, to these devices to be, you know, augmenting the, uh, the endpoint user, the frontline worker, uh, really the knowledge worker and moving that capability further away from, if you will, and an extension to cloud services, as well as to MEC type services. This is where we see it going. And um, really what we're trying to, to work on with IBM and with Red Hat is how do we you know, continue to fortify this, uh, not only from a uh, actual processing AI ML capability, but also equip these devices so that they can fully participate as part of a multi-hybrid cloud architecture. Uh, the endpoint is really one of the last bastions where we have not uh, kind of conquered bringing, uh, you know, cloud first uh, container native applications really to that point. And we believe the time is right uh, because of the, the capabilities that are there uh, along with, uh, again, uh, the, the, the connectivity that is uh, becoming much more ubiquitous now to allow for that type of architecture to exist. And uh, we're starting to call this the intelligent human edge uh, as well. Uh, we think that uh, the applications that we'll see for this are you know, ones that will uh, you know, make the, uh, the human operator more uh, productive, uh, safer, uh, certainly more efficient. And uh, we think that this uh, augmentation of that frontline worker is, is, is an area that uh, we, we are, you know, put, put, our, put our stakes on in terms of pioneering, uh, just because of, again, our experience in that mobility space and in that consumer space. That's great. Uh, you brought up Red Hat and IBM, obviously Red Hat yeah. bought, was bought by IBM. Arvin, kind sure. of, Arvin <laughs> the CEO, I, who I interviewed in 2019 in theCUBE mm -hmm. at Red Hat Summit, ironically, a couple months later buys the company, a smile on his face. He likes cloud. Maybe you had something to do with that, John. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> he wanted to, I could see he wanted to say it, but but he sure. loves the cloud. Everyone who knows Arvin knows that he's into mm -hmm. the cloud in a new way. And this edge piece that you mentioned that you're using Red Hat and IBM for hybrid. This is what the mm -hmm. new operating system is going to look like. It's a completely distributed system and yeah. the edge is just part of that operating model. This is what their vision is, which I love by the way. I think that redefines what that is. Are you saying that you guys are working with Red Hat and IBM for that hybrid edge piece? How does that work? Can you take yeah. me through that? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I mean, this is a, obviously the ecosystem is uh, bigger than that, but IBM and Red Hat really bring the expertise really around uh, uh, container ecosystems. Certainly the work that they have done in terms of uh, multi-hybrid cloud uh, certainly the work that OpenShift has brought forward in terms of you know, multi-platform capability. Uh, we really love the concept of develop once, run any uh, sort of a construct. And uh, when you think about it, the, the mobile platforms, uh, specifically you know, ours as, as, as well as others, uh, has really been that last bastion of, uh, of areas where more of the development is uh, on a particular platform, it's more bespoke. Uh, we think that by broaching this, uh, you know, in conjunction with IBM and Red Hat, um, this is going to give us the ability to have these uh, device architectures become a, a full voting member, if you will, of, uh, of that uh, hybrid cloud architecture um, and of that microservice uh, and container architecture that is, is becoming much uh, more prevalent. So this is uh, really the work that we're doing. And then obviously we're working at a vertical level to see uh, where are the applicable use cases in places such as uh, the design studio we have in Singapore, 
where with the Singaporean government, we're looking at uh, really bringing a renaissance to, you know, industry 4.0 type applications, smart factory automation, uh, public safety, uh, these areas where we believe that, uh, you know, this type of architecture can be, uh, can be uh, uh, deployed. That's awesome. And I you know, totally believe that, you know, the edge um, is still going to be pushed farther and further out, obviously having that, that yeah. open, open standards of, of hybrid. So I got to ask you on the edge, just while, you, while I got you here, you know, one of the, 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 the things that you, you see clearly is the industrial edge, it's called factories mm -hmm. and whatnot. You mentioned some of those. And then you got the human piece, which is like people have phones and wearables and other things are going to be happening. So as you start to have those endpoints, which are then going to be connected into a distributed network, AKA a hybrid cloud, <laughs> soon to be multiple clouds, but you know, that's a subsystem within the cloud construct. The complaint yeah. has been, not complaint, but the observation has been, and complaint if you look at it, that the edge is limited by power and connectivity. Okay, these are like key basic concepts. How is the connectivity option? I know 5G is coming, it's here, we're seeing it being deployed. We got people saying, hey, this is our business application, clearly got higher throughput, not as much range. Give us your take on this because this becomes important. Obviously power is battery driven, getting better and better and, and power is getting, uh, is not really that much of the problem, but connectivity seems to be. What's your vision of this? Yeah, and you know, there, there's a lot of ways to approach that. I, I will tell you on the industrial side, at least in some of the deployments and POCs that we've been involved in uh, over the last uh, year to two years, um, connectivity is an issue. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with the infrastructure that is available in many of these uh, you know, plants or factories or uh, you know, uh, points of distribution. Uh, they're not necessarily you know, leading edge. In, in many cases, we're dealing with uh, you know, what I would call subpar uh, connectivity. It's not like a, an office complex where uh, you may have, uh, you know, kind of state-of-the-art Wi-Fi capability or, you know, 10 gig capability or whatever it might be. Um, so what we've, what we've uh, found on that is it requires actually quite a bit of work in terms of uh, fine tuning, uh, both on the, uh, the network infrastructure side, whatever that might be, uh, or uh, we've also found that on the device side, the you know programmability of the uh, of the device in terms of tuning it for whatever connective environment would be there, and, and we've worked with everything from you know Bluetooth, UWB, uh, to Wi-Fi six, and uh, everything in between. And, and in many cases, there are multiple uh, you know protocols or, or connectivity methods that are there. So you know, one thing we've learned is that um, you can't you can't necessarily assume uh, that in a uh, especially in a factory environment that those conditions are going to allow for um, uh, you know consistency. So you have to engineer around that. Uh, you know, and some of the things that we've done are, are really around making sure that we've got uh, you know deployable programmability at the device as well as you know uh, more dynamic network tuning capabilities that will allow for you know better connectivity and and, and to you know, handle things such as uh, consistency. All right, Casey, great to insight. Final question for you, why Samsung and IBM? What's the bottom line? Yeah, I think the bottom line is really straightforward. I mean, we've had a uh, you know 30 year history of working together. Uh, you know, we've been mutual customers to each other. Uh, we do, uh, a lot of work for IBM uh, in regards to uh, foundry type services and semiconductor services. And then we work very closely with them uh, over many years on, on, on applications. So number one, there's been uh, a natural relationship uh, just in the, uh, the, um, uh, the services that we provided to each other. But as, as we look at really the go to market, I mean, IBM brings so much credibility from a vertical market perspective. Um, there's a uh, trusted advisor uh, type status that I think is is uh, very profound, and it's been built over many years of you know delivering on on the promises. And on our end, I think what we bring is really this uh, um, th uh, this uh, cycle time uh, that is driven by our passion in the consumer space. And when we start to apply that into more of these vertical industrial uh, you know vertical sectors. I think that combination uh, is, is very powerful. Um, the services piece obviously comes into play with IBM. And then really the, uh, the Red Hat piece of this uh, really just puts the icing on the cake with really the, the market leadership in uh, you know, hybrid cloud and in uh, container native yeah. architecture. So 
it's just a very powerful combo. And, um, you know, the, the cooperation there has been strong and uh, we, we, we continue to look forward to uh, delivering more through that partnership. Casey, great to see you, great, great thing to hear. You know, you got scalable infrastructure, you got modern applications, you got the edge, all at hybrid. Great, uh, great partnership. Casey Choi, Executive Vice, Pro Corporate Executive Vice President and General Manager of Samsung Mobile B2B team. Great to see you and congratulations on your mission. Yeah, it's an exciting project. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing. Great to see you, John. Take care of yourself and looking forward to seeing you again. Okay, this is theCUBE's coverage, IBM Think 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.